It is breakfast time in Greendale. If you knock on Pat's door and go in, you'll see Sarah bustling about. Julian, it's time you were off. Pat is finishing his breakfast. Time I was off too. Julian is getting ready for school. Right. Off you go. Bye, Mum. Bye. Jess, have you seen my hat? Where did I put it? Ah, there it is. Time we were off. It's not our usual day today, Jess. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Pat. Good luck. Hold on tight, Jess. Off we go. Sam Waldron's out early, too. Morning, Sam. Morning, Pat. Where's your van, Pat? Can't stop. Taking the bus. A bus? What's he on about? Major Forbes has spotted the new notice in the post office window. Dashed good idea, what? It'll be extra work for Pat, though, said Mrs. Pottage. Morning, everybody. Morning, Pat. Hello, Jess. Come on, Katie. Time for school. Bye, Pat. Bye, Katie. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. We're ready to go. Hope you've got the keys safely. Oh, yes, Pat. And a fine morning to you, too. Here they are. Oh, thanks very much. This is exciting. I'll pop back in for the letters when I've got a warmed up. I left it down the next street, out of the way. Somewhere round this corner. Ah, there she is. I wonder why Pat has left his van round the corner. Here he comes. What's this? It's not his usual van. It's new. It's a Royal Mail post bus. You are going to be busy, Pat, now that you're to pick up passengers as well as deliver and collect the mail. I know. Granny Dryden wants a ride into Ingledale to do her shopping. Oh, that reminds me. You'd best see if the Reverend wants a lift. His whole car broke down on Wednesday. I'll not forget. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. The post bus stops outside the church. The Reverend Timms didn't seem to be ready. Pat had some letters for him. Oh, Pat. I wanted to go into Ingledale on your lovely new post bus today, but oh dear. I found these knots in my handkerchief, and I know they are to remind me about something, but bless me, I cannot think what it is. Well, Reverend, I won't be able to keep my passengers waiting. I'll have to be on my way. Uh, don't wait for me, Pat. I'll get the old bicycle out, if I remember in time. Well. Here's your mail, anyway. Goodbye, Reverend. Bye, Pat. Off he went to the next stop. Granny Dryden was ready and waiting for Pat with her stick and shopping bag. The door's on the other side, Granny Dryden. Well, Pat, this is summit new. What a lovely way to go shopping. Mind the step. Oh. Whoops-a-daisy. 
That was feeling quite excited, now that he had his first passenger. Off we go, Jess. Oh, Pat, stop, I've forgotten me act. Oh, dear. Back we go. I won't be long. I knew I'd forget some it. I wonder if we'll ever get to Ingledale, Jess. Ah, here she comes. It was a lovely hat. A pity to leave it behind. All aboard. I just hope she hasn't forgotten anything else. I think we have another passenger, Jess. Miss Hubbard must have a lot of shopping to do. Stop! Stop, stop! Thank you, Pat. If you could pass me a bag or two. Certainly, Miss Hubbard. Pat helps with the shopping baskets and carrier bags. It was a struggle to fit everything in. Thank you, Pat. Good morning, Granny Dryden. All safe and sound. At last, they were able to move off. There's Ted Glenn waiting by his workshop. What's he up to? He usually goes into town in his Land Rover. I'll ride into Ingledale with you, Pat. I need a new gearbox for the Land Rover. Oh, Ted, don't look where you're putting your big feet. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. I didn't see your old basket there. It isn't an old basket, Ted, though it looks it after being stuck on your foot. It used to be a lot quieter carrying letters and parcels, didn't it, Jess? They went on their way at last. Over the hills. Round to the right. And along bumpy country lanes. Round to the left. Was Pat trying to catch up on lost time? Oh, slow down, Pat. You're making me all wobbly. Now what? Pat had to slow down because of Sam Waldron's mobile shop. It was a tight squeeze. Come on, Pat. Left hand down a bit. Take it slowly, or you'll scratch in your post, boss. Pat, how about a little light refreshment? I'm sure Sam has something we can buy. Yes, a biscuit would be nice. It seemed a good idea. Can I give you one, Miss Hubbard? Oh, thank you, Ted. Pat decided to check a nearby letterbox. He found two letters. You'll all be spent up before you get to Ingledale, said Pat. And we really should be on our way. I have the letters to deliver as well as you, you know. I haven't finished me biscuits. Take them with you. Mind the step, Granny Dryden. After you, Miss Hubbard. Bye, Pat. And thanks. Have we left any behind, Jess? That's one thing about letters. They never get out for a biscuit. He passes by Garner Hall. Hello, Pat. Good luck, old fellow. Oh dear, what now? What's B.C. Selby doing? Stop! Stop! Sorry, Pet. You can't go this way. 
The old bridge isn't safe. It's all this rain. These floods are dreadful. Oh dear, and we're running late as well. I know a shortcut. Just go straight on this way. Thanks, PC Selby. Sorry about the bother, Pat. Then left, past the signpost. Down here. Don't worry, you'll be all right. Don't worry, he says. Feels like a ploughed field. Watch the gate. Just enough room. I hope Ted knows what he's doing. I knew it. We're lost. You don't know which way from t'other, young Ted. That's not fair. I've been this way dozens of times. It looks a bit different today, that's all. Oh. <laughs> now where? We're lost. There was only one way to go. I know where we are. This is the road to Thompson Ground. There were letters to deliver. And Alf was waiting to see the new post bus. Hello, Pat! Usual delivery, Alf. Thank you, Ted. Hello, Dot. Hello, Ted. Hello, Miss Hubbard. Granny Dryden was asleep. She woke up. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, are we there? Where's the market? Ted was looking at Alf's tractor. It just won't come off. It will. Well, she told me. Oh, 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 oh. Lord save us! Look out! Ah, ill heavens! Ouch! Was that the Reverend? Let's go and see. You all right, Reverend? What a ride! Thank the Lord, Alf, that you have hay in your barn. Oh, but I remember now. That's what the knots were for. One, to remember my sister's birthday. Two, to remember to post her present. And three, said Pat, to get new brakes for my bicycle. Why don't you go to town in the post bus? And I'll mend your bike for you. I'll bring it round to the vicarage tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Alf. Time we were on our way, said Pat. All aboard. I think I'll sit in front with Jess. I'm sure he won't mind. Next stop, Ingledale. Bye! Cheerio! Ingledale at last. Everybody back here, please, at two o'clock. We'll not be late, said Miss Hubbard. But when two o'clock came, Granny Dryden was missing. We can't go without her, said Pat. I'll go and look for her, said Miss Hubbard. She'll be in the market, getting potatoes. I wonder where she's got to. She'll be having a good gossip somewhere. Oh, there you are. Have you seen Miss Hubbard? She's looking for you. Looking for me? Said Granny Dryden. I wasn't lost. I'll tell you what. You sit in the bus, and I'll go and look for Miss Hubbard. 
No sooner had Ted gone than Miss Hubbard came back. Oh, I can't find Granny Dryden anywhere, she said. I think we'll have to report her missing. Oh, there she is in the bus. How did she get there? Well, you see... And where's Ted gone? Looking for you. Oh, but I'm not lost. I know you're not lost, but... Oh, never mind. We'll just have to wait. And I don't know when we're going to get back to Greendale. I think I'll sit in the bus and read my paper. But Ted soon came back, and they set off home again. There were letters and a parcel to take to George Lancaster at Intake Farm. George was collecting the eggs. Hey, there's Pat! Hello, George. Hello, Pat. I like your new post bus. It's a great idea. Do you think I could take a dozen ends to the market in it tomorrow? Indeed not, said Miss Hubbard. Just think of the feathers. We'd all be sneezing for a week. Oh, but what lovely eggs. May I buy half a dozen, please? I forgot to get some at the market. There you are, six lovely fresh eggs, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, George. Mind you, don't break them. It was soon time to be on their way. Bye, Pat. There's Dorothy waving from her gate. What can be the matter? Oh, Pat, she said. Mrs Goggins has been on the phone. She's ever so worried. She's wondering where you've all got to. Thinks you've had an accident with a new post bus. Why not come in and give her a ring? You're welcome. You must be parched after your trip. Most kind. Oh, Mrs Goggins does worry so. Hello, Mrs Goggins. Yes. No, we haven't been to Blackpool, just Ingledale. All safe and sound. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. What a time we've had. It's a wonder Pat managed to get us all home again. Now, don't you worry about your old bike, Reverend. I've given it a good oiling. It's as good as new. It just needs some new brake pads. I'll pop round with it tomorrow. More tea, Granny Dryden? Well, just one more cup. There was a saucer of milk for Jess. Come on, everybody. Time to be off. Hang on, Pat. I'll help you turn in the yard. Back you come. Uh, come on. Careful. Stop. Right. Off you go. It had been a long day. The next stop was at Miss Hubbard's cottage. Here we are, Miss Hubbard. Your stop. Just a minute, Pat. Mustn't forget anything. Careful as you get out. Mind the step. Thank you, Pat. Goodbye. Then it was Granny Dryden's turn.
Here, let me give you a hand down, Granny Dryden. Thanks, Pat. Me hat! I've lost me hat! Here it is. Looks as though she's been sitting on it. Thanks, Ted. I'll see you to your door, Granny Dryden. Thanks, Pat. Bye, Ted. Bye, Pat. The last stop before home was at the church. Thank you. My goodness, it's been quite a day. Oh, Pat, I still have a knot in my handkerchief. Now then, Reverend, said Pat, is it a new one or just one that you forgot to undo? I've forgotten, said the Reverend. Oh, dear. Goodbye, Pat. Time we remembered to go home, Jess. Postman Pat and his black and white. Early one morning, Jess arrived just in time to be let in with the milk. Hello, Jess. Just in time for breakfast. Julian was waiting for the milk, and Pat wanted a little drop in his tea. But Sarah didn't forget Jess. Time to be getting a move on, said Pat. I wonder what sort of day it's going to be. Let's see what the old barometer says. Oh dear, just look at that. It's pointing to snow. Now then, let's have a look at the sky. <laughs> Not a cloud. Pat tapped the barometer just to make sure. That's what I thought it said. Snow. Great. Snow? You mark my words, said Pat. We'll have snow today. I've never known my barometer to get it wrong. Snow, said Sarah again. Never in this world. There's not a cloud in the sky. Snow, said Julian. I don't mind. We're going on a nature walk this afternoon. It'll be more fun with a bit of snow. I'd better take some extra sandwiches, just in case. We'd better tell Mr Pringle. It might not happen, said Sarah. Now off you go, you'll be late. It was cold outside, even though the sun was shining. Pat hurried along to the post office. Ted Glenn had his scarf on, a sure sign that winter was on the way. Morning, Pat. Morning, Ted. Morning, Mrs Goggins. <clears throat> By gum, it's cold today. Morning, Pat. The post is none too hot either. I reckon it's going to get colder. My barometer was pointing to snow this morning. Snow? Oh, dearie me, not already. Surely not snow. Such a nice sunny day. Now, what was George saying when he popped in with the eggs? He had the radio on in his van. I'm sure they said it was going to be cold but dry today. Not a word about snow. <laughs> These folks on the radio, what do they know about the weather in Greendale? Now then, my old barometer, I've never known it to be wrong. Jess had found something to play with. Pat and Mrs Goggins were too busy to notice what had happened to the string. Now, that's for the village. I'll just tie it. Oh, now where's that string? It was here a minute ago. Um, is this it? Well, I think it is, but 
What's happened to my nice, neat ball of string? That cat can sense when snow's on the way. Come on, Jess. It looks as if a whirlwind's been at it. Never mind snow. Him and his cat. Pat was on his way. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Have you got your snowshoes ready? Snowshoes? Whatever are you talking about, Pat? We'll not be seeing snow this side of Christmas. Oh, don't be so sure. My old barometer... Oh, poo to your barometer. I go by the TV. Well, mind how you go. There was a parcel for Dr Gilbertson. Ready for the snow, Doctor, said Pat. Plenty of plasters and cough mixture, eh? Snow, said Dr Gilbertson. What's all this about snow, Pat? It's a lovely sunny day and I always have a good stock of medicine to hand. You never know when you need it. My old barometer says it's going to snow today. Oh, Pat, I'd rather go by the Met Office. More scientific. They have computers, you know. Anyway, look at the sky, you and your barometer. I don't suppose it's the snow that chewed the corner of this parcel. Oh, well, um, it's when the weather's on the turn. Catch, you know. Very sensitive. It's not too badly chewed, is it? Urgent letters. Gotta be off. Cheerio, Doctor. Morning, Pat. Lovely day. Morning, Alf. Have you got your stores in? Stores, Pat? What stores? Winter stores. In case you get cut off in the snow. But there isn't any snow, Pat. Not a flake. The man in the paper said it was set fine for two weeks. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> That's not what my barometer says this morning. Now, where has that cat got to? I saw something streak across the yard. It's not like your Jess to do that. Jess? Jess? What are you doing up there, Jess? Hello, Pat. Hello, Dorothy. Now, hasn't your Jess been stuck up enough trees in his time? When will he learn? He knows things we don't know. Come on, Jess. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it. Pat was on his way again. Next stop was Granny Dryden's. Morning. Morning, Pat. Lovely day for the time of year. Unseasonal, I'd say. Mind you, it was never like this when I was a girl. Come November, the snow would be coming down like feathers. We were cut off for weeks. We couldn't get to school, you know. You mark my words. We'll have snow today. Well, mind how you go. Bye. Bye, Pat. I don't know, Jess. Nobody seems to believe in my old barometer anymore. I'm not sure I do. But they can't say I didn't warn them. Gee, nothing like a spot of woodwork. Hmm. Better take this end off. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Ted, you've not let your stove go out, have you? I was just looking forward to a good warm-up. <laughs> I'm too busy to bother with it, said Ted. Besides, it's like a spring day today. You get warm doing a bit of sawing and that. I'd get it going now if I were you. There's a real cold snap on the way. 
If you'd seen my barometer this morning, I've never known it to be wrong. Nay, Pat, that's old-fashioned stuff. It's best if you leave that sort of thing to the experts. I listen to the radio. Hmm. I don't know about all these new-fangled knick-knacks. Give me my grand's barometer any time. Hello, Pat. Hello, Sam. <laughs> Pat arrived at the village school, just as Mr Pringle was setting out with the children. Morning, Mr Pringle. I hope you're not going far. There's snow on the way, you know. We well, don't worry, Pat. We'll be as safe as the letters in your bag. You know what the scouts say. Be prepared. Besides, here's the Pencaster Gazette local weather report. Set fair to the weekend. Well, you couldn't ask better than that. That's not what my barometer says. It says snow. We well, promise we'll be really careful. We'll just go up the teeniest hill, no further than Birkhow Barn at the most. Well, mind how you go. Uh, it makes you wonder, Jess. There again, I could be wrong. Morning, Pat. Morning, Reverend. Doing a spot of sweeping up the leaves? Well, no, Pat. It's this sand. Makes such a mess. Gets everywhere. There was I thinking there was snow on the way. Then, bless us all, the wind turned, and out came the sun. The good Lord smiles upon us at mysterious times. I do hope you're right, Reverend. I'd best be on my way. Cheerio! Hmm, that certainly is a mystery. Mm, you never know. Mind, that wind's getting up. And here come the clouds. Hello, Pat. Afternoon, Mrs. Pottage. There's a parcel for you today. Thanks, Pat. I'd best not open it. I promised to meet the twins on their way back from... Oh, Pat, look! Snow at last, my dear old barometer was right after all. We'd both best be on our way before it gets really bad. And there's the ancient oak and the willow. And when the cold weather comes, the little creatures will begin the long winter sleep. I wouldn't mind staying in bed for the winter, said Tom. Mr Pringle. And over in the meadow, the swift hare. Remember to put that in your nature diaries. Mr. Pringle, look. And here we see the last of the dog roses. Oh, please, Mr. Pringle. It started to... Over there, that's bracket fungus. Don't touch it. It's deadly poisonous. I'm cold. And there the rooks, flying from tree to tree, swooping and... Oops! Ow! My foot! Ouch, it hurts! Oh... Oh, Mr. Pringle, are you all right? It's, um, it's getting a bit snowy and cold. Can we go home, please? Oh, ouch. Well, yes, that would be a good idea. A very good idea. 
but I don't think I can walk, children. Dad's barometer was right after all. Oh, I wish he was here with his van to take us home. George! George! Where are you? He can't have gone far in this weather. Is that you, George? I've got a letter for you. Thanks, Pat. Put it in the basket, will you? Now then, look at this. Those little marks in the snow. Tracks. Well, it's not Jess. He hates the snow. I reckon it's a fox, after my prize ends. Best lock them up safely, said Pat. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. deeper by the minute, and the road was slippery. Ooh. Oh dear. Coming downhill, Pat slid backwards into a field. Oh dear. Luckily, the oh gate no. was open. At last, Pat reached the village. He stopped outside the school to collect young Julian. Hello. Where is everybody? Oh, Pat, said Sarah. The children aren't back yet. They must be lost in the snow with Mr. Pringle. You were right about the snow, Pat. Your old barometer beats my radio. I wish it had been wrong and the children were back safely. Now then, said Mrs. Pottage, they'll be all right with Mr. Pringle. Yon snow's getting awful deep. They should be back by now. It's getting dark, said Ted. Well, the snow stopped at least. Something must have happened to them. Now, I remember Mr. Pringle said they were going as far as Birkhow Barn. They might have taken shelter there, said Ted. I wonder if I could get through with my van. You'll only get stuck. I'll tell you what. Why don't we have a go with my lorry? It's bigger and heavier. We'd have a chance. There's a barn over there, Mr. Pringle. We could go in and shelter. We'd be warmer out of the wind. Well, that's an excellent idea, young Julian. We're getting slower and slower in this snow. Come on, children. <laughs> Ah, great! Bill's found a light. Now, children, let's settle down. I don't like sitting in the dark. There's plenty of straw. Nice and cozy. What do we do now? Ah, that's better. Nothing much. Ouch! My foot. I don't like the dark. Now for the emergency supplies. Hot cocoa and biscuits. Any idea where we are, Ted? Well, I've seen that tree somewhere before. But everything looks different in all this snow. Then, they get stuck in a snowdrift. Oh, that's done it. Come on, Pat. We'll have to dig ourselves out. You dig your side, Pat. 
I'll dig mine. Mm. Mm. Bryak. Mm. Won't take long. Mm. Ooh. Hot work this. <sighs> e. That should do it. Let's give her a try. Sounds bad, said Pat. It's now but a bit of wet got onto the plugs, I bet, said Ted. It'll be all right when I get it dried out. I'm sure I know this lane, said Pat. I'll just have a look. <laughs> Not that I'm going to see much in the dark. Hmm, better be getting back. What's that? It sounds like... Oh! Oh! It sounds like... singing. Ted! Ted! There's somebody over there, singing. I heard them. Clear as clear. What are you on about, Pat? Singing? How can there be? Listen. You're right. Let's get a move on, said Ted. So, here you are. Wait, it's Pat and Ted. Hooray! 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 Come on, you lot. That's enough singing. We'd better get you home. Take it easy, Mr. Pringle. Take it easy. Like a hand, Mr. Pringle. Easy as you go now. Watch that foot. Thank you, Ted. Last one. Up you go. Okay, Ted. Lord be praised, here they come. I hope they're all right. Katie and Tom, I'm so glad you're safe. What about the others now? What a story young Julian had to tell Sarah. It was great fun, really it was. It's a bad sprain. You will soon be fine, with a bit of rest. Well done, Pat and Ted. That was magnificent. But I know one thing. Next time I want to know what the weather's going to do, 
I'll ask Pat what his barometer has to say before I do anything else. Here, here. Me too. Champion, said Ted. Proper champion. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black...